Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh, right, you saw me do. You know she likes to make blooper. She does. <laughs> 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 I'm really just trying to get my water. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title, well, you, you should be excited by now. That me and my friends, we are doing a mukbang, mukbang. So, <laughs> the food we have is, well first, the friends that I have here. This is Ayana, that's Amaya. They were in my Which Friend Knows Me Best video. And so today we're just gonna be talking. Um, I found some questions online and I also asked people on Instagram to ask us some questions or any type of topics. They have not seen it yet, so this is gonna be like straight off the dome. Uh -huh. um, the food that we're eating today is cookout, which Maybe is like fries is good. This is like a North Carolina Southern delicacy. Some people will say this is only for after the club, but I enjoy cookout at any time of the day. Yes, I don't. This is my second time eating cookout. cookout. So what do we have? So we got. I thought it was gonna be a salad. She changed her mind. So we have um, we a got lot, a lot of food. <laughs> So I went too far. I wanted us to make sure we had enough food. I think our total was like $25, which is very reasonable. $19.69. No, that's not it. It was 25 It definitely was 20 something. So I got hot dog with ketchup. Oh, we gotta show our food. Ketchup, coleslaw. I've never had a hot dog from cookout. Yummy. As long as it's burnt, I'm gonna eat it. And then, so cookout, they have trays. So you get like your entree and then you get two sides for like $5. What's this? Oh, that got to be Amaya's cause oh, that's insane. I hope that is <laughs> Amaya, what you get? Case to be a true, case to be a prize. Amaya is um, getting married in December, so she is on the Snatch-a-thon. <laughs> I tried to be on the Snatch-a-thon, but baby. They don't be lasting. Okay. <laughs> Which is mine. I got a chicken sandwich with fries and hush puppies. And Cookout's menu is like super extensive. If y'all don't know about Cookout, but I'm sure most of y'all do know. That's just catch up. And then, oh yeah. Oh, that's sauce. Dang. I thought that was a cheesecake. It is. It ain't no oh. cheesecake. Yeah, I got a little cheese. She went. I didn't even cook out that cheesecake. <laughs> a little piece of cheesecake. Did they give you sauce at all? Oh my goodness. You can't get strawberry on top of it. This is a Yana tray. What you get? Chicken strip tray. Oh, you got season on your fries. Yes, Cajun. Okay, so we're going to get situated first and then we're going to move. I said this in my last video, but I know Amaya. Oh. <laughs> I know Amaya. Kia asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that's an obvious answer. I know Amaya. I went to middle school, high school, and college with Amaya. So I met Amaya when I was in seventh, sixth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, something like that. So I know her for a very long time. And then we both met Ayana, um, freshman year, freshman year of college. So how long have we been out of school? We, but we, right. we, we, we got to school in 2011. In 2011, so now, you know what I was thinking about mm -hmm. when we was about to record this video? I was like, this, because now it's rendition. Rendition is like the freshman oh. month week. So I'm thinking like, this is probably the time when we met each other. Yeah. So it's six, our anniversary. So what, is this 27, 2018? It's our seven year Seven years that we have not. That's, almost, that's a long time. Years. It don't feel like it. Really it really doesn't. It doesn't. So in that time, I've known Maya since sixth grade. That's how long that is. And then I've known her. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hi. I met yeah. her. But so we we we've experienced a lot of each other. <laughs> so that being said, um, somebody asked a question. They said, definition. What is your definition of friendship? And how to keep a long-lasting, healthy friendship? Oh, that's a good question. Yes, it is. So what order are we going in to answer the question? It's no order. Just. Speak how you do. Um, I think what makes us all click so well is that we're all very different. Like, we all have very different upbringings, different personalities, and we all bring something different to the table. Mm -hmm. Like, none of us are really alike. And what are certain ways. things that are alike about us? We might have similar interests. Like, we do not be posting people when they're not in their best form. Yeah. <laughs> like, we don't, embar we don't look to embarrass each other, which I just, I feel like sometimes we don't want to be like, that's your friend. You know, I'm like, that's Um, that on me. sorry. But I think we talked about this the other day. Um, who said it? Oh, because Oprah had answered that question. Oh, with Gail. And they said, um, like, why, how are they such good friends? And I think it's because, like, we're always happy for each other. Like, and I think that goes into us being all different. We got a life, we all have different career paths. So I'm never like, Ayana is a nurse, so she's about to go to school and all that. So I have no desire to do what Ayana does. I don't so, you want to be a nurse. 
I considered it, but and so it's never like um like Amaya, she's into um broadcast journalism. And that's not like necessarily my speed and Keon's into what's Keon into? Human resources. Human resources. But that is kind of where I'm trying to go, but we all have different goals, so it's never like we're competing for the same thing. So I think that makes it a lot easier to be happy for one another. And even if it's like there's a time when one of us is like kind of up and the others are like kind of down, you know, it's still never like any type of hate because it's like your time will come. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to like hate on what the next person is doing because there's nothing out here anybody, me and my friends are not that that there, there's nobody out here to me that's attaining anything that I can't attain. Mm -hmm. So there's never, there should never really be a reason for me to be jealous of anybody. So for me, I think we're such good friends and we've been friends for so long because we don't hate on each other and we're also very honest with each other. Um, we're able to say, I think now as we're older, we're able to have more mature conversations about our feelings and being upset with one another. Which probably when we were younger, it probably wasn't as easy. Younger. <laughs> But that tickles me. The next question on Instagram is from Keon. He's the fourth addition to this little circle. He already know the answer to that. He question. said, Why do y'all keep making these videos without Keon? Oh, yes, he don't live here. Keon moved to Charlotte. Which he will never do. Exactly. exactly. If y'all don't know, Keon lives in DC and we all live in Charlotte, so that's why. And then um, Jasmine, this girl named Jasmine, she asks, What's your thoughts on black owned business, black owned companies, and supporting them? Ooh, let me answer. Okay. <laughs> Tell so I feel like black owned businesses feel like this way. I feel like black owned <laughs> businesses feel like just because you're black, black need to support you. A lot of black owned businesses that I have encountered, customer service is lacking. The the product, the service is lacking. And I just feel like you feel like just because we both black, you don't have to give your best effort. And and I'm just I'm just supposed to support you anyway. Yeah, and that, that's just not true. I could probably count my hand the number of black owned businesses that I actually would support yeah. continually. Yeah. I've had very bad experiences. My issue with black, not even an issue, I love black businesses. I think that the concept, I love the concept. And I feel like, I feel like this, black people will say, you know, we really need to band together, we need to take over, but then they will also in the same breath say, why everybody selling hair? Why everybody doing lashes? But think about it. How many agents have nail salons? Do you think that they're saying, why they got, why they opening a nail salon? My, in my mind, if everybody I know wants to sell hair, you sell that hair to the best of your ability. Because that's another black person, you know, making a step in the right direction of taking over the world. But so. if the opportunity presents itself, I'm definitely gonna support a black business if I have the opportunity to do so. For our wedding, one of our main goals was to try and support black businesses while planning our wedding. So a lot of our vendors are black owned businesses. Like I wanna say But it's been a struggle to get yeah. to that point. Like I wanna say black business is a very good concept. The execution is another thing. So I don't exactly. think it's always executed very well. But I'm always here for a black business and I try not to hate on a black business, but you know I'm always gonna be honest. Yeah. I'm kinda of fool. Me too, but I mean, we don't. Ooh, Jesus. You tore her up. Oh, my God. That chicken quesadilla reminds me of a good old Taco Bell uh, chicken quesadilla, and I ain't mad at all. <laughs> I mean, I love that taco meat from Taco Bell. Oh, no. It's but good. I like black businesses. I know plenty of people that have black businesses. Another thing that irritates me is people talking about support. <laughs> you think, like she said, you think because I'm black, I have to support you, but I don't have to do anything. Like, just like with me having YouTube, nobody has to watch my videos. Would I like for you to watch them? Absolutely. Do I appreciate you watching them? Absolutely. I'm not going to get upset because you don't watch my videos. Why? Because I'm not for everybody. Just like what you do is not for everybody. So instead of you complaining and saying, y'all don't support black people, da, 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 talk to the people that do support you. Or, excuse me, talk to the people who don't support you and ask them why don't they support exactly. you. Instead of saying, y'all don't support it, ask them why. Because then maybe you can grow as a business. But y'all talking about, y'all will support a celebrity before you support your friend. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of seeing anything talk about the negative aspect of support. For me, I never, I don't talk about nobody who don't support me. I will always thank. I, try, mm -hmm. I always try to just like randomly tweet like I'm so thankful or, you know, I just try to be very appreciative of people who do support because they don't have to. And I'm never going to force myself. That's another thing. Ooh. Stop trying to 
to force your brands on people. Mm. Don't just bombard my Instagram mentions, I mean my Twitter mentions and my Instagram DMs with your flyer and expect me to post it. And don't even say, hey, how you doing? Like my mama could have just died, but here you come in my DM Listen with to your flyers. Single. Listen to your single. What? Mm -hmm. That's not how this works. But what do I mean? Okay. So these are from, some of these questions are from like the quote unquote black girl tag. So what's that? Like. Just questions. Like a tag on YouTube is just like at questions. Like you answer questions. So the first one. Are this face a little weird? Uh oh. Not <laughs> like nasty, but just not what I was expecting. The first question is Are you natural, relaxed, or text lax? What's text lax? I don't know, but we all natural. Text lax is like, um, what's that thing called people be getting? Transition. Oh, a texturizer. Texturizer, yes. Um, but we're all natural. Yeah, we are all natural. Um. I'm gonna say, y'all have always been natural. Haven't you? No. I perm my hair. I got kind of like three perms in my life. In high school, my senior year. I don't want to put the chemical to my hair at a young age. Oh, yeah. I was in second grade when I first got my relaxer. Ooh, wee. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was so tired of doing my hair. I don't remember when, but it's been, it was a while. And then, next question. So, to answer the question, we're all natural. Um, when did you big chop or were you natural all your life? Which is kind of goes hand in hand. Well, she just said she guess it's been natural her whole life. Me, I was not. Um, when I got to college, I grappled with the idea <laughs> of transitioning. Like, there'll be times where I'd be transitioning, then I would go home on break and get a relaxer. So, um, all through college, I kind of went back and forth between that, but then, um, it was my last year of school and I was transitioning. I was like, you know what, well, I wear wigs all the time anyway, so I cut it all off. And that's when I would wear it like slip back. Mm -hmm. I lived that slip back. Yeah, you I sure did. It. it was a little ponytail. It was just like, <laughs> I love that slip back. <laughs> it was just slip back hair. That's it. <laughs> oh, I remember that's that. That's that. a nice little style. Mm -hmm. I, well, I cut mine off in 2012, I think. It was my the beginning of my sophomore year. So I've been natural well, seven years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your favorite thing about being black? Mm, my hair. My hair can do Ooh, what nobody else can do. <laughs> <laughs> what? Is it? That ain't my answer. That's my answer. My favorite thing about being black is probably. I just think black people just add flavor to everything. Like they are the flavor of the earth. Like when it comes to dancing, music. Just everything is just like, I feel like inspired by black people. It's the Lowry season salt to everything that your mama put on. Yeah, mm -hmm. like soul, just everything. Then the white people copy. But, um, and I feel like in the African American community, there's like an unspoken language. Like it's just some stuff that I can only get in speaking with you that I can't get with speaking with anybody else mm -hmm. that's not, you know, black. Um, What's not, I don't know if I have a necessarily a favorite thing about being black just because like I don't know anything else to say I don't like being black because of this like I just like being black because it's lit like yeah this is all I know and I've enjoyed my life as a black woman so I think everybody secretly wants to be black <clears throat> some people don't keep it so secret <laughs> like do things to alter their body yeah like making your lips bigger the Going and tanning, 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 getting braids in Jamaica, calling it box of braids, stuff like that. But I, I like every, I, I guess that means I like everything about being black. Like it's no, it's nothing I can pinpoint. Like I do like my hair sometimes, most of the time. I would like it more when it grows longer. And I wish my hair could just wash and go. That's the only thing. Yeah. I don't like not have to mess with it every night. Yeah. That can't be healthy for my hair either. Um, this one says, what black woman woman do you relate to the most? Um, fictional or non-fictional? And some of the examples are Olivia Pope, Laverne Cox, Solange, or just any black woman. Oh wow, I never ever thought about That's that. That's a hard question. That I can relate to the most? Or maybe like even inspires you or... I know for me, I love me some Oprah. I always had, even as a child, I have Oprah's 25th anniversary DVDs and we used to come over my house. I would say, do you want to watch my Oprah DVDs with me? <laughs> um, and that's when I was like mad young. I just think like, obviously- Can you Oprah, imagine being a little child? Like, you want to watch Oprah with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I would make people watch it because why not? But 
Obviously, Oprah is like super successful, so who would not? She's self-made. Like literally out the gutter, mm -hmm. got it out the mud. Read her book. She is self-made. I really rock with Oprah. I'm trying to think, is there any other celeb that I like? I like Tracy Ellis Ross just because of her style. Yeah, she's dope. I appreciate women with good style, and she has one of the best styles that in Hollywood, in my opinion. I would say Erica Badu. I love how free spirited she is. You think you're free? I didn't say that I'm free. Yeah, but yeah that mouth is free. Like, you say anything I don't know. You, you said somebody that you can look up to, that yeah, inspires you, or that oh, yeah. you're relatable to. I just love that Erica Badu is completely herself. She's a free spirit and she's just living her best life. For me, this my heart person person. is my person is Nurse Mo. So Nurse Mo is a nurse and she like created her own kind of brand on Instagram and created this big following. And now she's like a part-time nurse and her business is kind of, I guess, like her full-time type thing. She's like an entrepreneur, motivational speaker, everything like that. She be the essence and everything. And to come from the hospital as a nurse and then kind of transition into her little own entrepreneur type role. Nurse Mo is my inspiration. What? What's in here? When do you feel your blackish? At homecoming. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Our homecoming, because it's just like, I'm black and I'm proud. All I see is black people who are like, succeeded. Shit. Who have succeeded and came from the same place that I did and like, not to, I'm not gonna go into the whole PWI, HBCU debate, because I don't know anything about going to PWI, but for me, from my HBCU, HBCU experience, um, Everybody that I know, they have a lot of love for the institution that they came from. Even if it's not my institution, just coming from an HBCU period, I just see a lot of people who have, have a lot of love for their institution. And so when you get to, when you come to homecoming and it's like a sea of people who share the love of mm -hmm. that school. And like you said, like we're successful from that school and went on to do amazing things. Like it's like somebody asked me the other day was like, what was like, can you like tell me about the HBCU experience? And all I could say was like, it's just like being around black excellence 24 7. Like, that's it's it. It's also kind of hard to put it into words. It's, I could, it's, it's, something, it's something you just gotta experience. It's no way I could tell you like what it's like, because it's like little things. Yeah. Like, that make, that make up the HBCU experience and that make it just black people being black. <laughs> Unapologetically black. Yeah. Because you see some white, like crazy stuff. I think, so last week I was just at um, NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists Conference in Detroit. And to see so many black professionals, black journalists, you know, on their hustle, going to the career fair, going to different workshops, hustling during the day and then at night, just like turning up, partying, and just being around a sea of nothing but black people who are in the same field as you, who experience the same challenges as you in that particular field. I felt super black and I felt super empowered and it was just like black excellence all around. Um, this question and another question go hand in hand. Would you ever, or have you ever dated a white guy and how do you feel about interracial relationships? I dated a white guy when I was in middle school. That don't count. What the one, girl? Um, you remember the little, <laughs> you remember the little white boy, his name was Dallas. You might not remember him. Mm -mm. Um, <laughs> that don't count. I <laughs> was a child. I was, but what y'all know about that? We didn't do nothing. Except went to a movie, then both sets of parents were there. <laughs> so what about now? Well, you're engaged, but. Would I ever date a white guy? Mm -hmm. Nope. And y'all know my reasons, but I can't say that. <laughs> what about you? No. I wouldn't. It's too much to teach. I had this conversation yeah, with somebody. We did. And it's just, I feel like it's too much to teach about the black culture. It's like almost like saying you can't explain an HBCU to somebody who went to a PWI. It's just like, this is just a whole different culture. I don't feel but like maybe, teaching But what it. if he gets it? I don't think you can. I, how can you? You're not black, so you can't get it. You can think you understand that you can be an ally. Yeah, but you can't be an ally. Okay, like if you're an ally and you're, an ally. You're, willing, you're willing to learn and you want to learn. I'm not here to teach you. That's the thing. That that's not it. I feel like that's not the proper relationship. Like I don't want to always be teaching about my culture. I think it's good to learn about, you know, your partner and everything like that. I don't want to teach about the black culture all the time. I mean, but what if you were dating somebody that is like 
from Africa, and maybe he's Nigerian or something like that. You're learning about that culture, but he's still black. I don't know, it's just African man. <laughs> so would you not, like, you wouldn't date somebody that's like African at all, Ayana? No, I don't say African, just white. Because even when I step out into this world, it's a whole different experience than when you step out into Let me the tell world. You something. If I was ever date a white man and somebody, you know, remember that it's a video of like Samara talking about like the hate she used to get. They was calling her like the what did they say about her? Like the slave owner's hoe or something like that. Let me tell you oh, something. Lord. Nobody ever said something about that, something like that about me. It's over. Oh wow. But I just have no desire to date a white yeah, man. Yeah, that's I just don't. White men are cute, but that's it. Yeah, I think they're attractive, but it's I just don't like, feel like you can protect me. I don't feel safe. Um, I don't know if I would say all that. I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like if you recreate a child and I feel like my child don't look like totally me. like me. My child gonna struggle with their identity. And yeah, they're gonna have a different experience in this world than me. I don't know. I, I don't, just don't have a desire. I also for just like the idea of a black man. Like black love. Black yeah. love, black men, black mm -hmm. children, black family. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah, I don't think it's for me, I don't think it's anything against dating a white man that I can say in this recording. <laughs> but um it's just something about black love. Like that black on black connection, that black skin besides you got Yo bonnet on, he got his do-rag on and you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. taking my wig off and <laughs> you asked me No why. questions asked. You asked me why I got this cap on under my wig. <laughs> right. Why I got a wig on in the first place. What's 4C hair? I don't want I don't I don't want to be your teacher. <laughs> I think white people are some white people are great, but I just wouldn't want to have that type of relationship. <laughs> One has to go. Collard greens, cornbread, yams, or baked macaroni and cheese. Yams. Yeah, bread and yams. I don't, don't eat neither. Oh. Yams. For me, we're talking go. I ain't getting rid of that cornbread greens. and green. Greens. I ain't getting rid of the macaroni and cheese. I either. love collard greens with a ham. Yeah, honey, put that ham hock in there. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't got a ham hock in your greens, don't serve it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so for me, greens can go. I love, if it, one thing I love is cake or anything that tastes like cake. Mm -hmm. So cornbread. But not that crumbly, crumbly stuff, though. No. That's not even cornbread. That's crumbly. But you know, some people try to serve you that crumbly corn. And don't put no corn in no cornbread. <laughs> don't put no jalapeno. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is nothing worse than biting into a piece of cornbread and it's jalapenos in it. Or it's corn kernels? Oh my god. That must be a white person. I was about to say a white person did that because no black person would do that. That's another teacher moment. Cornbread, honestly, is supposed to be like cake. I need my cornbread to be a little sweet. You should taste the cornbread at my old job. Or you used to tweet about it all the time too. At your old job? Yeah, cafeteria. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I mean, I'm gonna use tweet about that cornbread all the oh time. Oh my god, I used to get it. I, when I left, I emailed the lady. And, and said what? what? What kind of cornbread is it? <laughs> I asked her a recipe actually, and she said they buy it. Like, I can buy that cornbread. I at the store? No, not at the store. You gotta order online. <laughs> um, this one, the next one is what is your hair type? What's your hair type? 4C, we already know that. What's your hair type? Child, 3C, 4A. I'm still on a journey of discovery. You are 4B. 4B. <laughs> with a tendency, with a little bit of 4C tendencies <laughs> uh, sprinkled in there. Um, name four hood slash black movies. Just name them? Yeah. Oh, well, like Boys no. in the Hood. Never seen that one. Friday. Boys in the Hood, mm -hmm. so good. Friday? Mm-hmm. Hood or Love and Basketball. Yes, The Wood. Oh, the Love Jones. Love Jones is one of my favorite movies. Losing Isaiah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Life coming to America. Yeah, mm -hmm. classic. I'm but it's with tail. Oh, come on, let's see the photo. Here's Miss Keon. Put that water bottle. <laughs> There's like your image right there. And you put the water bottle in it too with the image. Wow, Keon. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite, like, what's one of your favorite black movies? Coming to America. Loving basketball. That's classic. I, I like, like, have a few. I like higher, have you ever seen higher learning? I've never yeah. seen that. Yeah. With, learning. um, what's that old man's name? Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. <laughs> higher learning. Um, The Wood. Love mm -hmm. Jones. Yeah, mine is Coming to America, Life, and Waiting to Exhale. 
I love waiting to exhale. Yeah. I can't really think on the spot, but I love loving basketball. Yeah, that's oh, a good one. Oh, y'all didn't name poetic justice as Mondo's movie. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. 